What's the battery degradation on the classic Ionic? Let's dig into owner data from across the globe and find out. The Hyundai Ionic 28 kilowatt hours is a reference in the EV world. It launched in South Korea in July 2016. That's nine years ago now and it has an excellent ratio of charging speed to battery capacity, about 2.5x. In other words, it makes the most of a relatively small pack. So what's the battery degradation like on these cars after years of running them hard and getting that fast charging speed for a modest battery? I asked those of you who own one to charge the car to 100%, then drive it down to a low percentage, and then record both the distance driven and the efficiency. And that way we can calculate the true usable capacity left in the battery. The great news is that many of you took part. In the last 18 months, we've gathered data from 87 cars in 20 different countries with a total of more than 190 submissions. That's pretty impressive, I think, and it confirms that classic Ionic drivers don't mind sharing their learnings. In fact, I think they're a bit of a pioneer group. So a huge thank you to everyone who played along and a special call out for the Ionic Black Knight from the Netherlands as they've submitted 50 readings on a car that's well over 200,000 kilometers. And also a special thanks to Valaki1234 from Hungary that gave us 14 readings and Samthi28 from Germany also with more than 10 readings. So many thanks everyone. Now, if you're not subscribed to the channel, a good time to consider doing so. But enough preamble, time for the stats and the charts. Let's go. Right, let's start with a quick look at the responses on the form. So 198 responses. By the way, since then I've opened up to a number of other cars, but you can see in the main, almost exclusively, I got responses on the Hyundai Ioniq EV28. In terms of years for the car, 50% or more are from 2018, 24% 2019, and then 15% 2017, at least that's the split in the responses. The country the car was driven, you can see there's a whole range from Germany, Norway, Sweden, Netherlands, a couple of the USA, Canada kind, etc. Right, a lot of the UK as well, a lot of Netherlands, a lot of Germany, all good stuff. You can see that 83% have adopted the uh, kilometers and watt hours per kilometer, but we've converted everything, so don't worry about that. Now, in terms of how many people have used DC charging and how much, the reality is we are not going to be able to tell an awful lot about that because most people didn't know whether the car had been used mostly with DC or not. Uh, we can see 17% tell us somewhere between 10 30% and then 10% or less also another share. So that's quite interesting with a, a few that are actually reporting using DC a lot. And of course, the reason why we asked that question is because because it could have an impact. The more DC charge, in theory, the more impact you could have. But the reality is probably a little bit more subtle than that. Now, when did we get all those measures? You can see that we started around February 2024, a bulk of data collected to July 2024, and then we've had the trickle through until now. Right, so I think it's a good time with the best part of 200 submissions to do this kind of new update. In terms of the distances people have been driving, of course it will vary. What matters is that they give us the percentage of battery remaining at the end of the test and then we are going to put all of that on a curve. Now we do correct for the non-linearity of the battery capacity curve. The state of charge is not quite linear on the Hyundai Ionic, but again, fear not, we are correcting for that. Now the efficiency displayed will vary quite a bit as well, but we know the Hyundai Ionic is very efficient and you can see a lot of the 120, 130 watt hours per kilometer. 
the mileage of the car well we'll come back to that of course but it's a, a broad range into the 200,000 270,000 you can see a lot of cars have done well over the 100,000 now again these are the responses we're going to filter that by car to avoid double counting and we know that uh, we've got one user who has a car with more than 200,000 kilometers and loads of samples in there as for the temperature, I don't think we're going to be able to tell a massive story about relationship between the battery capacity remaining and the temperature because you can see the vast majority of those temperatures are kind of mild temperatures, the 10 to 25 in the main. Yes, we did have a few measures in Canada and in Norway, but in the main, we're not going to have that big sample on the, you know, very negative and on the very hot either. Okay, it's now time to take a look at what's left on the battery of each and every of those cars. So you can see the 87 cars are lined up and we've sorted them from the lowest usable energy to the highest. And we gave the reference of 26.5 kilowatt hours, which is what you'd expect to be able to use when the car was new. Because yes, it's a battery of 28 kilowatt hours, but the reality is with some of the losses when you drive, etc. Typically, if you multiply efficiency by the distance, you're going to get 26.5 when the cars were new. So what that tells us already is that the lowest we've ever had is 20.2. And in fact, and this was just the one measure, although that car has been taken to Morocco. I would invite you to check out that video. It's quite an interesting testimony. So really what we are talking about is 21 to 26.5. And this one is also equally a little bit odd. But what this is saying is that the median car, the typical car, will have 24.1 kilowatt hours left. So you're missing out on 9% of what you would have had when the car was new. That's not a lot. More than that, you know that if you take any car, you're all going to be within that range. I mean, that's a good sample. 87 cars taken randomly, irrespective of the distance that they've covered in their lifetime. You're going to have something like 24 kilowatt hours plus or minus 1 kilowatt hours. That's the standard deviation. So something like anywhere between 86, 87 percent and let's say 94, 95 percent of the battery when it was new. And that gives you loads of reassurance because you can go on Auto Trader, you can go on your local market used sales car and pick yourself any car without any test. If you know it's an Ionic 28, then you're going to get a car that has at least 85% of battery left. Because that's what this says. You cannot find one that has less than 85%. Whatever happened to the car? So if you pick any Ionic 28 on the used car market, you are very likely 90% chances to have something like 21.8 kilowatt hours or more. If you run it normally, you'll get something like 130 watt hours per kilometer. And I'm not just talking city driving. City driving is more like 100. And that means you'll get about 170 kilometers of range driving on roads and maybe 200 kilometers in the city. Right. So that means you have a fully usable car and that's on any Ionic you would find. And they are from what, six, seven thousand pounds these days on the used car market. So a lot of value for money. And that, by the way, answers a different question, which is, you know, can you find cheap, affordable EVs on the used car market that you can take far? Yeah, well, that's an example of one. This one charges fast and it has great battery, even when it has a hundred thousand kilometers. Now, it's time for the pièce de résistance, for the main feature. And for that, we're going to cut the data. We're quite rich on data. We've got enough of a sample. So we're going to cut anything that's below 25% on the final state of charge for when the car was driven, because we'd like to focus on stuff which is not too much extrapolated. And yes, we do 
correct for the fact the curve is non-linear on state of charge but the more you're going to be using that kind of data over here the more you're going to introduce some imprecisions this is the energy that's usable in the car as a function of the distance traveled so you can see that there is some form of correlation it's not the strongest by the way but there is decent correlation between how far the car has been driven and how much there is left in the battery but the variation is not huge of course we've just seen that and you can see that in the main most of the readings are going to be in that space meaning at least the 22 kilowatt hours we have talked about already most of the cars anywhere between 50,000 kilometers and 250,000 kilometers they will be delivering that 22 kilowatt hours and above so it's just a different way of showing broadly the same thing but again that means you've got great certainty that there will be little variance from one car to the other of course, if the car is driven more distance, then you have more chances that there is that bit more degradation, but not huge. And if we want to know how much degradation there is per 10,000 km, well, you just take a look at that green curve and see that it's shifted by less than 2 kilowatt hours for 200,000 km. So that's about 0.3% of battery loss per 10 thousand kilometers and that's very similar to what we found a year ago with the smaller sample of data now let's take a look at usable energy as a function of the age of the car so we know that most of the cars are going to be four to seven years old and here you see limited correlation so it's not clear that age really matters for this car, at least within that range of four to eight years old, because it's also a pretty tight range. Now, what about DC versus AC charging? Does that matter? You can see on the left hand side how much AC charging versus DC charging there has been. Higher numbers mean more DC charging. What is the remaining usable energy? 23.8, 24, etc. This one seems like it had the most DC charging. It is indeed the worst performance. But it's also the set of cars that have the highest distance traveled. Well, if you correct for the distance traveled, now you can see that most of those numbers are very similar. Somewhere between 23.7 and 24.3. That's very limited variance, right? So I would argue that this car doesn't seem to be too prone to degradation because of DC charging. It's hard to say very much on the basis of that data, but at least it's not saying anything bad about the Ionic when it comes to too much DC charging, which is a positive. Now, final parameters, the temperature, does it have an influence on the usable energy? We focus on those 50 samples from the Ionic Black Knight. Again, thanks for that, because then we've got the one car and we can test for this single parameter, how it changes. And you can see that when the outside temperature is higher, it seems like typically the outcome is a bit better. The usable energy comes out a bit higher. Now let's look at the influence of consumption on usable energy. Well, taking the Ionic Black Knight samples again, you can see something that looks like pretty decent correlation. So in other words, the more you consume, the more you push the car, the less you seem to be able to get in terms of usable energy out of the car. And that kind of makes sense because that should be related to the losses in energy that you have from pushing the battery, pushing the drive. So that's quite interesting because all of that will take us to the final equation, the final relationship between those various input parameters and how to best estimate the usable energy available on the car. And warning, we are in full geek mode now. We are doing a multi-linear regression. So in other words, we are testing for a bunch of input parameters and are looking for their impact on this output parameter, which is our usable energy. And this p-value, this thing is kind of an indication as to whether the parameter 
is an important one or a parameter that shouldn't really influence the outcome. So you want to exclude those in red. What are those? Estimated age of the car, we've seen poor correlation. Outside temperature will be excluded as well. The consumption itself is going to be linked to the outside temperature anyway. Finally, how much is left in the battery at the end of the test? Well, you would expect that not to have any impact, again, because we've done the corrections and all of that. And yes, indeed, it's not important. So what are we left with in this model? Simply the distance the car has traveled over time in its lifetime, and then the consumption, the how efficient the car is in watt hours per kilometer. That gives us our final equation for how much usable battery capacity there is in a car. It's about 24.9 kilowatt hours. And then you subtract 0.85 kilowatt hours for every 100,000 kilometers the car has driven in its lifetime. And then if you've traveled for this test at an excess of 130 watt hours per kilometer, which is your typical efficiency, then you should deduct a little bit for that as well. Another way to put that is to say you will have slightly underestimated your total usable capacity if you've driven the car very hard on the test or if the temperature outside is cold. I think that's going to be it for today. You can still check the page and enter your own data to understand how much once corrected for linearity you've got on your car. And of course, if you want to keep submitting your results so that we keep checking over time, feel free to do so. I'll include the link below. In the meantime, I hope you found that useful. Thanks very much for watching. Please leave the comments. Please subscribe and goodbye. <laughs>